Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be discussing the risk stratification of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, that is ALL. And uh, I'll be discussing how the risk stratification of ALL is, uh, or the, how the risk stratification of ALL is done, and uh, how uh, that affects the treatment, the prognosis, and uh, what risk stratification actually is as far as ALL is concerned. Now, ALL is traditionally being classified or is being classified as for the ICL protocol that's being followed in many institutions all over India into standard risk, intermediate risk, and high risk. Now, what do we mean by this risk? In case of many other malignancy, you would be referring to a staging classification, whether it's stage one, stage two, stage one, stage two, stage three, and the prognosis becomes poorer as the stage progresses. However, in case of le uh, leukemia, especially ALL, uh, acute lymphoplastic leukemia, we instead of staging, we have something called as risk stratification or risk classification. This risk denotes the risk of relapse. What we essentially want to make sure that Acute lymphoplastic leukemia initially is a very treatable malignancies. More than 98% of patients, more than 95% of children actually go into a remission. More than 95 to 98% of children actually go into a remission. But they sooner or later tend to relapse. And we have to prevent this relapse. And that's why the risk of relapse is being predicted by this risk stratification. Now, how do you predict the risk of relapse? The certain general principles that are applicable to any malignancy and how we'll classify the risk on how we'll classify the staging. First, obviously, will be what will become important is the site of the tumor. There will be certain sites. These are called the sanctuary sites. If the tumor is present there, obviously, the treatment will become much more difficult. The, uh, the chemotherapeutic drugs will have tougher time reaching there. So testis and CNS, both are considered sanctuary site. Hence, reach of chemotherapy at these places would be tougher. Hence, these sites could be potential sites for relapse. So if the child initially has, if the patient initially has a testicular disease or a CNS disease, his risk becomes poorer. Similarly, it will be dependent upon tumor load or burden. If there is more tumor load, risk will be poorer. Uh, if there is poorer response to treatment, the risk stratification would be higher. And what finally drives the disease? What are the mutations that are driving the disease that will affect the prognosis? So risk stratification of any leukemia or any disease can actually be considered under these four broad guidelines where it is located. There are certain sites which will have a poor prognosis. What's the tumor burden? What's the tumor load? What's the response to treatment? And what drives that disease? What are the mutations that are driving the disease? So let's look at the particular uh, things that are the poor or good prognostic factors as far as acute lymphoblastic leukemia is concerned. So as far as site is concerned, like I discussed before, CNS and testes, both these are sanctuary sites. Since these are sanctuary sites, response to chemotherapy will be blunted chemotherapy drugs won't be able to reach here as a result it will have a poor prognosis and higher chance for increased chance for relapse so good prognosis would be if you do not have these sites involved then tumor load now how do you calculate tumor load in case of a leukemia in case of a solid tumor it's easy to calculate tumor loads because on the basis of the size of the lymph nodes or the size of the tumor or the uh, location of the tumor but in case of leukemia, it's essentially the blood cells which are driving the mutation. Here we are, a tumor load is dependent upon the initial counts. So if the initial counts, the WBCs are more than 50,000, that signifies a higher tumor load and a poorer risk. And bulky disease, in case of let's some sometimes you have, uh, especially the T-lymphoblastic lymph leukemia, they tend to present as mediastinal masses in adolescent age group. So if the mediastinal mass is more than one third more than it occupies more than the mediastinal mass is more than one third of the tumor uh, of the total thoracic diameter that t4 t5 t6 then it becomes a bulky disease or if you have hepatosplenomegaly if you have hepatosplenomegaly which is crossing the umbilicus so these diseases the child will present to you with fever hepatosplenomegaly and this is hepatosplenomegaly if this is the let's say a diagram of the uh, the spleen is crossing the midline it shows a higher tumor burden and hence a poorer prognosis now, most important as far as prognosis is concerned is the response to treatment. First is poor prednisolone response or MRD positive. Both of these portend a highly poor prognosis as far as leukemia is concerned. Now, poor prednisolone response is what do you mean by poor prednisolone response? So, in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, irrespective of whatever stratification the person falls into, in the first one week, we give prednisolone at the dose of 60 mg per meter square. And on day eight of treatment, we do a peripheral smear to look for blast. If the blast count is less than 1000, it's called good prednisolone response or GPR. It's called good prednisolone response. 
if however it's more than 1000 then it's called poor prednisolone response so poor prednisolone response on day 8 of treatment is significance signifies a poor prognosis and hence has been included in the risk stratification of leukemia then what is mrd at the end of induction the first phase of treatment of leukemia is called induction. We look for something called as remission. While most children will be in remission, we look for in the bone marrow how much uh, cells are still, leukemic cells are still present and we are able to do this via flow cytometric methods. If the number of cells is more than 10 to power fold, it's called the disease is said to be having MRD positivity or minimal residual disease positivity. So if presence of either of these, be it poor prednisolone response or be it uh, MRD positivity, it signifies a poorer prognosis. Now, what drives the disease? So there are certain, there are certain mutations, there are certain mutations which drive the disease much more. They're difficult to treat. The chemotherapy tends to respond poorly. So one of them is the translocation T92, the BCR ABL1, and the second one is translocation 411, which involves the gene MLL. These two tend to have a higher counts, they tend to have a poorer prognosis and poorer response to chemotherapy. The third one is an intrachromosomal amplification of chromosome 21. The certain mutations which actually confer a good advantage. These are translocation 1221 along with hyperdiploidy. Presence of these uh, signifies a good prognosis while presence of these signifies a poorer prognosis. These three together are sometimes clubbed together as uh, poor cytogenic risk factor, poor cytogenetics. And then age also, some a uh, child who is less than one year of age or who is more than 10 years of age or essentially an adolescence, they tend to have a poor prognosis while the children in the age group between 1 to 10 tend to have a good prognosis. As far as the the phenotype of the uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia is concerned. B cell phenotype has a good prognosis, while T lymphoblastic leukemias or T lymphoblastic uh, lymphoma tend to have a poorer prognosis as compared to B cell. Based on this, let's look at the actual risk stratification that is used. So first, we'll actually look at the high risk, and then we'll go down as far as the uh, standard risk or intermediate risk is concerned. So let's look at the high risk. So as we, I, as I told you before, any person who has poor, uh, any patient who has poor prednisolone response that is on day eight after the seven days of prophase treatment with prednisolone if the blast count on the peripheral smear is more than 1000 it's considered poor prednisolone response so poor prednisolone response is poor cytogenetics mrd positive that mrd more than 10 to power raised to power 4 is present if the child has cns disease cns disease obviously means less penetration of chemotherapy higher chance of relapse or a high risk cytogenetics if these are present then it's the patient is said to have high risk uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia intermediate risk is a patient who does not have who does not have any high risk criteria that i discussed before who has all the good risk features but a either the age is more than 10 years or maybe the initial WBC counts are more than 50,000, same thing is a more bulky disease. Or if the bulky lymph nodes were there, they were more than one third of the chest diameter, or they were, there was bulky liver and spleen that is going beyond umbilicus, or there was testicular disease like I discussed before. Again, a sanctuary site, difficult to reach. But MRD is negative. MRD is negative and prednisolone response is not poor. It rather has a GP or a good prednisolone response. If good risk features are there, but there is a bulky disease or if there is testicular disease or if there is a WBC count or again a bulky disease signifying a higher bulky or more tumor burden or if the age is more than 10 years, in such a scenario, it's called intermediate risk, a slightly lower risk stratification as compared to high risk. If there are no, inter if there are no intermediate risk start, uh, criteria, if there are no high risk criteria, then it automatically becomes standard risk. So you have, you are B cell, there's the prednisolone is good response, MRD is negative, WBC is less than 50,000, there is no high risk cytogenetics or there is more good cytogenetics such as, uh, such as translocation 12, 21, there is no CNS disease, remission is there present after induction. This thing is called standard risk. Thank you.